Welcome back to Wayne's Motor Co. Let's get the top end on this bike. Well, here we are. Just a little bit of time left to get this motorcycle running and riding for the Georgia Grunder Run. Today, we're gonna throw that cylinder on there, the pistons, the head, rocker boxes, all that stuff, so that we can get this bike running and get it up to Georgia for that motorcycle meetup. With that, I wanted to say thank you for everybody that jumped on and supported us during August and September for our Patreon and the order giveaways. Somebody watching this video today is going to win their very own sticker pack, so you want to make sure that you hang out until after the credits roll at the end of this video and you can learn how you can win yourself one of the Weems Motor Co sticker packs. Enough. Now, let's get this top end on this bike. So you've heard us say this before. Before you start a project, make sure you have all of your parts laid out, clean, prepped, everything ready to go together to be assembled. And that's what we've done here. With that, I want to say a special thank you to my good friend, AJ Richter at Richter Machining up in Iowa. All right, so for this video, we will be doing a top in for Mr. Jared Ween. Gonna get some of that before action so you guys can see the contrast and change. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, swampy. I think you're gonna be able to kind of see what is going on. That is why I wanted to start on this side because we can already see at 10 thousandths, um, it's not looking too hot. I got cylinders drip drying here. Head is now ready to get the seats cut. Um, I honed these guides. All four seats are cut. Uh, three angle faces, like I said, 30, 45, 60, um, and then that D shroud. Top end's all done, ready to go back. I'm going to uh, get it in the box and sent today. He was the guy that took on this project with a very short timeline. He bored our cylinder. We had to go 40 thousandths over with the pistons. We ended up going with nine and a half to one compression pistons when this motor originally had like eight to one compression. So we're gonna have a little bit more power inside that combustion chamber. He also did our head work, did all of our valve job, new valves, new valve springs, fixed a crack that was in there and went ahead and put new inserts for the spark plug holes so that we can make sure that this 1950 Triumph is ready to put the miles down. So we have everything prepped out. We got our wonderful gasket kit from my uh, good friend over at Franz and Grub in LA. Make sure you check them out if you're looking for gaskets for your Triumphs. They're really great quality stuff. All of our parts laid out. Everything's ready to go together. The first thing we need to do is to get those pistons mounted onto the connecting rods. Let's do it. Pistons all mounted up, everything's nice and smooth, lubed up, ready to go. You're asking yourself probably why Weems do you have that rag down in there? Well, those little circlips that hold that piston wrist pin, sometimes they like to pop on you and they'll fall down on the bottom of that engine and man, you gotta fish them out with a magnet or hopefully get them through the sump, who knows? But we do that to prevent that from happening. So a good point as we're talking about this, we already have the rings mounted on the pistons. now. These uh, were already set up by my good friend, AJ. Uh, he went ahead and set our ring gaps, took care of a lot of that stuff that I would normally have to do uh, to save me on time. But something you wanna notice that in these rings, they actually have a gap in between. Right there, you can see like a little separation in those. That's where the you have to install the rings on there. Now, when you're putting these uh, into the cylinder, lowering the cylinder down on top of it. You do not want to make those gaps line up because then compression is going to make its way through that gap that you have there. So you want to make sure that you offset all of those gaps in all three of those rings 
Uh, I usually do one at like 12 o'clock and one at uh, 7 o'clock and one at 4 o'clock as you're looking down on top of them just to make sure you're doing that. Uh, you also want to go ahead and lube these up, put a little bit of that same oil that we've been using during this whole process, that 20W50, uh, so that everything is nice and lubricated before we start this engine. Nothing's worse than starting an engine with dry components. So we need to lube that stuff up and then we can get our ring compressors on there that'll squeeze those rings together and then we can get that cylinder ready to lower down on top of it. We're getting there people, let's do it. Moving on after getting the pistons mounted up on the connecting rods and having everything ready to go on that, the next thing we need to do is get our cylinder prepped. And uh, basically, like I said, Mr. AJ went ahead and did a great job boring these out. We went 40 thousandths over. But now we need to install the tappet blocks into the cylinders. And uh, you're probably asking yourself again, hey, what's a tappet block? Well, a tappet block is this little thing right here. So these two little uh, parts are called tappets. These ride on the cam and as the cam goes up and down, so do those little tappets. So they ride up and down and what rides on the top of those is going to be the push rods. So the push rods ride inside of that and they go up and down and they open up the valves it calls the engine to run, suck in gas, blow out exhaust, things like that. So these tappet blocks need to get installed into the cylinder. Special tool that we use to hammer these in. There is a nice little hole right there that you have to make sure you indicate into the hole on the side of the cylinder where that locking bolt goes in there and we can get these indexed correctly so that we can get that cylinder onto the bike and that we can get it lowered down and start working on the head. Let's do it. Got the tappet blocks installed into the cylinder. We've made sure everything is nice and lubed and those little zip ties that we we're putting on there is so when we turn the cylinder over, those tappets don't fall out and fall into the engine. So everything is prepped. You just wanna make sure that the inside of the cylinder walls is clear of any debris and go ahead and put a little bit of oil in there. A little bit of lubrication helps those piston rings to slide down and seat properly. So. The only other thing to remember is that this cylinder only goes on one way. There are some holes that are larger. That's where you've seen us put those little dowels in the cylinder first. So we wanna make sure we index everything nice and neat, slide it on home, put all of the base nuts on the bottom, and then we can move on to the next step. Let's knock it out. getting the cylinder base torqued down, got it knocked out. Next thing is to get the push rod tubes installed on there. Now, I always tell people when they're rebuilding their Triumphs to be really careful at this point because this is nine times out of 10 where your motorcycle is gonna leak from and uh, we've seen a lot of bikes leaking from the push rod tubes. So we wanna make sure that we do this properly and the technique is called squish. So what happens is we put the head gasket on top of the cylinder where those pistons were sticking up. And then we take our push rod tubes. These push rod tubes in particular are a little bit different. They change these several times throughout the years, but they have these indexing holes where your push rods actually 
ride inside there side by side so you want to make sure when you're putting these on that you put them on so they're parallel to the engine and not opposite because then you're going to be indexed wrong. I usually take a little piece of marker and just mark which way I want to be facing towards the front. And then I take my thickest rubber O-rings that I can find uh, in the kit and I put those all around the base of the tappet blocks. So that gives me the maximum amount on the bottom. And then we place the smaller ones around the outside of the push rod tube, right around the top there. And then we take the head and we set it on top. And we wanna get a measurement between that head gasket and the head as it's just sitting on there with everything seated where it's supposed to be. We want that measurement to be approximately 1 8 of an inch or 0.125. That way when we torque that head down, it squishes those two O-rings the big ones and the thin ones and it seals that push rod tube really nice and tight between the cylinder and the head so that's what we're going to do next we're going to get these push rod o-ring seals on there get the push rod tubes on there get everything indexed and straight and get that measurement so that we can begin putting those head bolts in and torquing down this top end let's knock it out we have discovered is we have the thick rubber o-ring at the base of our push rod tube and the thin one at top yet we don't have that 1 8 gap that we need to squish down so what we're gonna do is pull the head back up we're gonna put the thicker ones also on the top so we'll have thick ones on the bottom thick ones on the top and that should give us the gap we need so when we torque that down it seals nice and properly let's get the head back off change out those o-rings Now that did the trick. Putting those thick rubber O-rings at the top gave us the gap we need to get a good seal on those push rod tubes. Now we just need to make sure that our holes in our push rod tubes are indexed in the right place. And we can go ahead and throw those four outside head bolts in and hold everything nice and tight in place and move on to the next process. Let's put those head bolts in. This next part is probably one of the most trickiest parts about putting the top end on one of these pre-unit trams. We have to put these push rods down through the push rod tubes indexed on the top of those tappets and then the top of them goes the rocker box. Now inside the rocker box you have these two little indentations. That's where these push rods go and as you're sliding this on you have to make sure everything is indexed and in its right spot. I like to take a little bit of grease and just put it on there and it kind of gives a suction on those uh, tappets so when you put it down in there you can feel that it's actually made contact with them. And then the same thing on the top, I'll put the grease in there and I can move these rockers and I can feel that I've got tension on those. So everything is lined up nice and straight, nice and neat and it pre-lubes them as we go. So tricky, not impossible but it might take you a couple tries to get it on the first one. Let's see how many tries you think it's gonna make for me. Jump down in the comments. Let's figure out how many times it's gonna take me to get these rocker boxes lined up with these push rods. Until then, let's get back to work. too shabby if I say so myself. I've had a lot of practice at putting those push rods in, especially if you've uh, seen that bike that I have, the 1956 Triumph Desert Sled that we've 
titled the push rod popper. I've done a lot of push rod changes out on these bikes. So with that being said, it's time to torque down the motor. Uh, we're going to work in a special sequence. If you got a manual, make sure that you refer to that. It's going to tell you which bolt goes first. And then after that, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I know that these get 18 foot pounds. So we're going to torque down the head and make sure that everything is nice and tight there. Then we can move on to the intake and we can throw the carburetor on there and we can wrap up this top end. So uh, let's get to work. Super easy, got it all torqued down, got our head steady on there. Now we can work our way back to the intake. If you have hung out with us this long, thank you guys for hanging out. Remember, after the credits, we're gonna have a special message if you wanna win a sticker pack. Stick around till then. Now, let's get this intake on here so we can get the carburetor mounted up so that we can wrap up this top end. Let's get back to work. All right, so before we get that carburetor mounted up, I just wanna let you guys know that we were waiting a few weeks while AJ was knocking out the top end work on that. So we had the opportunity to go ahead and rebuild that carburetor. And while we were at it, let's say, let's go ahead and redo the throttle. Let's redo the brake lines. Let's redo the clutch. So I got all the controls all done up. So we are ready to get that thing mounted on there and ready to rock and roll. Not only did I do that, but I also did something else. We went ahead and took care of all of the wiring on the bike, went ahead and installed a six volt battery because this is a six volt wiring system, charging system, all of that stuff that goes on it. So we got a light up front, we got a light out back. We went ahead and put LED bulbs in there so it didn't draw so much amperage off of the battery in case the charging system was not up to snuff, but go ahead and check out this front headlight. Now that'll light up the sky at night. So we even got a little dimmer on top, nice and dim. And then we head out back and we'll check out that tail light. Let's go ahead and see how that's light up. Oh, nice and pretty, hit the brakes, boom! Everything's working great. Now, let's go ahead and throw that carburetor on here so we can button up that top end. Just like that, we have a carburetor mounted, top end buttoned up. We still need to adjust the valves, adjust the timing so we can get this thing started up and that will be on our next video. So with that, if you guys are new around here, jump down and hit that subscribe button. If you really like the video, hit that thumbs up, turn those notifications on and let everyone know what's going on right here at Weems Motor Co. Peace. So if you hung out till after those credits, this is your chance to win a sticker back. This is all you have to do. Simply make sure that you are subscribed to our channel. About half of you guys that watches the channel don't even get the subscription to it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. The second thing is, is I just want you to simply jump down in the comments and let me know what you think we should do once this bike is completed. Should we sell it? Should we keep it? Should we make it a daily rider? What should we do? That's what you're gonna do. Jump down in the comments, leave that. With that, have a great day. Peace.